overheating a little bit. Two gamblers in a row. You can really hear the knock in here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Billy D, and this is, of course, Done Different. And today, we're gambling the Mustang. And we gambled it hard. Now, you might be saying to yourself, but Billy, you told us in the last Mustang video you weren't touching it for months. Well, I intended on not to touch it for months, but. I got the paperwork literally the day I was supposed to leave to come on this gambler. So I took a chance, put the uh, Monte Carlo off-road tires on the back and loaded it down, way overloaded, which I'll show you here. And we made it a long ways until we didn't. Let's go ahead and get into the action of us making our way out to Colorado for the Colorado Gambler 500. We headed out of Oklahoma City and only did about two and a half hours our first evening and we got up to the downtown motel in Woodward, Oklahoma. Because the bolt pattern on the Monte Carlo is 5x1 14.7 and the bolt pattern on the Mustang is 5x1 15, there is a slight difference. Even though the hub center bore is the same, I had to stop every 50 miles or so and make sure they were torqued down. Can you guys hear that? It's after midnight in Woodward, Oklahoma. And this car wash, right next to the motel I'm staying in, has the loudest sound system I've ever heard for a small town car wash, or actually really for any car wash. Super crazy, it doesn't bother me in any way, shape or form because there's a lot of wind and the air conditioner's going on the rim, so no big deal to me whatsoever but i just think it's kind of crazy that here i am in small town western oklahoma almost the panhandle and this car wash has got the tunes a bumping all right you guys well that's it for tonight we'll see you guys in the morning which will be now First thing I did was torque the lug nuts down again. A little bit of movement, not a ton. I continued to do this up until about 500 miles into this trip and then no longer needed to do it anymore. This particular part of the trip had the worst crosswinds. We're talking 50, 60 miles an hour gust coming across, pushing me with my giant car top carrier and tiny rear wheels all over the road. It was quite sketch, but once we hit about the Colorado border or so, it wasn't that bad, and we were able to push on to Pueblo. We knew that we were going to be going over I-70 over the Rockies in the middle of the night and I did not have headlights or the time to get headlights while I was in Oklahoma City. So I found a salvage yard in Pueblo, Colorado, Dawn's Salvage, and I was able to stop there right before they closed and get a headlight. I already had one, but I was able to get the other, get them zip tied to the car and up to Denver and over the Rockies. Unfortunately, I didn't get any footage going over the Rockies in the middle of the night, but we did get to camp at about 3.30 there in Grand Junction. Took us a while to get set up. Didn't get to bed until about 6. Got up at 8 and started gambling. Here comes the Rambler Gambler.
course. Coming up those uh, steep dirt roads. And uh, yeah, we're definitely overheating a little bit. So uh, we're gonna let this sit. Probably try to add some water to it. I don't know, we got one hill of a terrain that we've been climbing. It's not rough, it's just super steep. All right, I'll check back with you guys here in a minute. Well, we got about, I don't know, half a mile back up and overheated on me. Beautiful, precarious location, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. This is where it was leaking from, and then all of a sudden, is that a manifold gasket? I sure hope not. Intake manifold gasket? I have no idea. Huh. All right, check back in in a minute. Well, I got it turned around off camera and definitely, I was able to get it started, but I don't know. I don't know exactly why. I mean, I know why it overheated, but I don't know why it popped like that on the intake. Hopefully it'll reseal, <laughs> as my buddy Brandon just said. Now we got people coming up. Anyway, it is very what is concerning. It? Overheated, possible uh, blown intake gasket. There's four things, me too. Yeah, yeah. We're overheating bad. Yeah, we, I mean, it, it's died on me multiple times, and so it's going, uh, I'm going to try to coast it down, but got to let it cool off, put some water back in it, and... Yes, it's very steep. I know, I just came up it. <laughs> we, I got it turned around. That's why it's faced the other direction. You guys need I think we're good. We've got plenty of water you and... Sweep? Do what? Have you talked to Sweep? Sweep? Uh, who is that? Cody, huh? white Jeep. No, no, uh-uh. Have not. Do you, do you guys need anything though? No, we're good. He's in the brand new Tacoma, so... Yeah, exactly, so... All right, you guys too. If we can get on yeah. Have a good one. Yeah. Well, we're back on the road. We're headed down. Temperature's fine for now. Topped off with a bunch of water. Um, actually, it, it took like, I don't know, a gallon and a half, two maybe. Uh, definitely a lot of water so we're going to get down to the bottom there's this town called gateway they have a little general store it doesn't close for another two hours so we are going to go there and uh, hopefully they have some coolant they should pick some up and uh keep that in case uh it happens again but we're not doing any more climbs today i don't know we may do another waypoint or two i doubt it but uh, whatever the case, we are getting off of this extremely steep, not right here, but where we were, extremely steep climb. All right, I'll check back in with you guys at camp. Well, we made it down. It's not overheating, but we definitely have a leak. And I think, I think it's coming from maybe the water pump. It could be semi good news. Not sure. We will find out though. But we're picking up some coolant at the, uh, there's no sign. Oh, there we go. The general store. You want, at, you want the 50 50? Uh, yeah, yeah, the pre mixed. <laughs> so we're at the general store and uh, car is still having issues. So we're going to get it back to camp and then figure out where to go from there okay so we made it 20 minutes down the highway trying to limp it back to camp from gateway from gateway and there is definitely a pouring leak coming out from around here I still think it's an intake or head or some sort of gasket 
Maybe it's coming from something else in there. Don't think it's coming from the water pump anymore, but I really just don't know. So we're gonna pour some water in there. I'm gonna see. It's still pretty hot. If it's, I don't know, is it coming from? That's what I thought. What is that? I didn't know. Is that an injector? No, that's not, that's the injector. I don't know what that is. But there shouldn't be coolant coming from it. I don't know. I don't know Fords. I don't know what half this stuff is. Okay, check in later. Okay, well I haven't shown you guys yet my ratchet system, but I have to ratchet the hood down so it doesn't flop around in the wind or come up and hit the windshield because of the fiberglass issues I've shown you in other videos. So it's a lot easier to see now that it is coming from over here and my water pump is not happy. It's hot, probably melting my belt. Mean lifter shit going on. So we'll let this cool back down and then, I don't know, I have AAA for a reason, maybe I should call them. We think we figured out what it is, what the piece is that failed. I don't want to blow up the motor. I don't know. So if you see a tow truck in the next clip, you know. If you don't, you know. All right. Catch in the next clip. Well, this is two gamblers in a row that the weather has decided to destroy my tents. And we did everything in our power to make sure this didn't happen, and it still happened. Not too high, not too high. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hey, hey, Don't hey, worry, hey. I'm gonna set the whole place on E brakes on too. Right, thank you. Thank you. I guess you don't need the key since you're coming with us, yeah, huh? Yeah. Do you want to follow us there? Okay, gotcha. Absolutely. Do you, do you have the address already? Okay, sweet. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. And she's here. Okay, I am going to let this play through in its entirety. Get a little zooming here and there, but it is completely uncut all the way across the board. This is how it happened. You cannot hear what we were talking about, so I jumped in here to narrate this and let you know because this is quite the interesting uh, situation. So, he has me get in, put it in neutral, 
and then of course he loosens the straps and all that stuff and loosens uh, the winch or uh, frees up the winch and then lets it roll backwards well we, we try this um, a few times he has me get back in are you sure it's in neutral are you sure uh, that it's not in gear are you sure the parking brake's not, not on and it wasn't I made sure that was all off so I'll go ahead and let this play through and then once it gets to the part where we figure out exactly what's going on I'll let you know So at this point, he goes ahead and has me crank it up and try to back it off. And we're still getting a ton of resistance and we can't figure out why that it won't move. Like there's something stopping it. Is the e-brake stuck on? Is the transmission busted? Is there something going on that's keeping it from rolling that has to do mechanically with the vehicle? Now at this point you can tell he's visibly starting to get irritated and he can't figure out what's going on so he decides to go ahead and disconnect the winch so that the car is no longer connected to the bed in any way or at least that's what he thought and have me try to drive it off of the ramp put it in reverse and just gun it and i uh, kind of tried that and it wasn't going anywhere Where he figured out what it is. Can you guess in the comments? What is he telling me? Yep, you probably guessed it. He had it hooked up on the other wheel on the other side where he couldn't see and forgot to disconnect it. And finally, it rolls off, smooth as butter. Now the next thing I'm about to do here, as you can probably see, is I'm about to tip this tow truck driver for coming out, saving my butt, it was free because I used my AAA membership and he gets paid well off of that. But these guys put their lives on the line every day to help stranded motorists. I think it's the least you can do. Give them a little tip to show them that you appreciate them and appreciate what they do and putting themselves out there for us having adventures like this one. So there you have it, exciting, fun time, stressful, of course, 
we got it towed. We got it back here to my best friend's uh, parents' house. Big, big thanks to AAA. Guys, if you don't have AAA, and I am not paid by them in any way, shape, or form, but if you do any sort of car stuff and you travel, there's no reason for you not to get a AAA membership. Free tow within 100 miles every year, uh, and then, you know, pretty reasonable rates after that. It is definitely a no-brainer for a car person that likes to travel. We are now going to spend the next day ripping this apart and replacing the intake manifold, which I don't know if I mentioned is the issue. A piece of plastic of the intake manifold busted off and that's what was causing the steam, the water, the coolant to come straight out of the top and to drain it and to cause those issues. Okay, so I'm gonna start pulling things apart. I've watched a couple of videos on this already. The uh, throttle body has to come off. The EGR can stay, but the alternator has to come off. And then the fuel injectors, the fuel rails, all that needs to come off. Um, all of these vacuum lines, wiring harness, all that stuff has to come loose. I'm not gonna go through and show you guys step by step. There are plenty of videos out there that you can do that on. We're gonna do this in time lapse, and I may do some voiceover and talk about what I'm doing or what maybe I ran into struggles wise. All right, let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so the phone overheated and you guys didn't get to see the last little bit of that. Me taking the alternator off. Super easy. Just these two bolts at the bottom. You just got to loosen them. And then the alternator just pulls off. You don't actually have to pull them all the way out. Which I didn't realize until it was all the way out. The uh, injectors are all disconnected and up here. Fuel rail. The ignition coils. All disconnected. I think everything's disconnected. All the bolts are out. The manifold is loose. It's ready to come out. Everything's pretty nasty. I don't have really access to compressed air right now. So I wouldn't have been able to blow everything out. So I'm going to be very, very careful not to get anything down into the heads, into the valves. Pull this off. Stick some paper towels down on the holes and then run to O'Reilly's and get my intake. Oh, I forgot to disconnect that rear hose because I was gonna to try to do it once everything else was off. Let's see if I can get it now. Now that everything's loose, it'll be much easier to get off. At least it should in theory. All right, now it should come free. EGR, left that in place. Not even about to attempt to break that off, which is why we had to pull the alternator out. And there she is. All right, let's inspect the damage. Oh, she's nizzle. Look at that. Gaskets are blown out. May just be the gaskets. Oh man, this is all rotten. This is all rotten. I don't know if that's 
okay for it to be that way. I assume not. Doesn't matter. Oh no. Yeah, and you know what? This looks like this is a doorman because of the intake gaskets. I'm not sure if it is. That's what I'm replacing it with is another doorman. Because I think the factory ones is one big gasket instead of individuals like the doorman. Not 100% sure. Doesn't really matter. We're going to go get the new one. Slap it in. Hopefully fix everything. I'll see you after I get back from O'Reilly's. Oh, and real quick before we go. Leakage, maybe? I don't know. We'll clean all this up as best we can. I'm going to stick paper towels down in it so that nothing falls in it and creates a problem. Okay, we're back. We got the part. Looks to be the right one. But before we get that installed, we have... So that part that I said that looked rotted was actually melted and melted plastic is all over the top of the block here. And uh, hopefully that's not an issue, but we're going to go through and scrape all of that off and uh, then get the intake installed. And this side doesn't have that. We're still going to clean it off but no melted plastic over here. All right, back to the time-lapse. Okay, we've gotten the intake surface here on the engine block or engine heads. I don't even know if that's the block of the heads. I think that's the heads. Anyway, we've got it pretty cleaned off. Looks like these gaskets are self-sealing. So, um, yeah, we're ready to go. Let's get this thing slid in. All right, let's make sure all of the gaskets, nothing's pushing, nothing's unseated. I don't know if you saw that, but just checking on to make sure they're all where mm -hmm. they're supposed to be. All right, let's get her in there. Mm -hmm. Will you come hold these? Yep. Oh, you know what? Crap. I should take that off first. What a pain in the ass. Okay. Make sure there's no other safety things like that. Doesn't look like it. All right, in we go. So I forgot to get a picture or video of it, but that little table, that portable table I had set up next to the car, when I was taking everything apart, I put each individual bolt in the order that I took it off on that table. And then when I went back, did it all in reverse order to get it in and not forget anything. Right, where it's supposed to be. Okay, do the rest of this in time lapse. Reverse order.
were done, I think. Hopefully. Anyway, I have this one little ground wire, I think. I don't know where that went. I'm going to have to review the footage. I think it went there. Not 100%. percent going to have to review the footage on that. The This was... I don't think I unplugged this. Let's see if I can get a better shot. I don't think I unplugged that. I don't know what it is. It's connected to a sensor in the middle of the valley. So maybe a knock sensor. So I should probably have that hooked up. But uh, I don't know where it came from. So I'm going to review the footage and make sure that we didn't miss anything. And make sure that was disconnected previously. And then we're going to crank it up and add coolant. Now is the moment of truth. Everything has been hooked back up and the serpentine belt has been put back on. Thanks to my buddy. I almost missed that one. We hooked up the battery. Let's crank it over. Hopefully it starts. Pour some coolant in it. stress and anxiety are starting to go through the roof because I just did over 900 miles, blew an intake, fixed the intake, turned the car on, and then you guys hear what yeah, sounds okay. like a horrendous rod knock. Dummy. See what I did? Mm -hmm. You said on the battery and it sparked. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys heard that horrible rod knocking sound. Kind of got quieter as it warmed up. Then the tank got pressure and started spewing. Unfortunately, I didn't get footage of that have a crack i think in the seam here and then there's a couple of cracks that come straight up so i bought this kit which i've used on the metro seems to work just fine don't know if i'm going to be able to get everything perfectly sealed but i'm going to try and uh then we're going to slap that on i was told by a friend on facebook that you can actually run these without the cap and that will uh, allow it not to build pressure and so it'll just use the coolants in the system and it less it overheats it's not going to be spewing out so we'll fix this if it continues to leak we'll take the cap off and try that honestly i'm more concerned about the uh, rod knock right now because we still have a thousand miles to go so let's get this uh, patched up real quick and go from there okay so again the leak is in this area we're just going to try to patch it all and uh, hopefully that works so 
if you guys remember when I did the Metro, couldn't see quite as well, but I did give you step-by-step -step instructions on how they said to do it. So hopefully here, you guys will be able to see it a little bit better. So let's take this off first. So if I remember correctly, you mix these epoxies up and you have like five to 10 minutes. Uh, firmly apply pressure to lower half pouch to burst through center seam. Knead entire pouch until product is thoroughly mixed. Carefully cut up in corner of pouch, a dotted line, squeeze adhesive onto area to be repaired. Um, yeah, it doesn't actually give a time limit on this, but I know the last time I used it, it was like five or 10 minutes or so. This is the fiberglass patch that we will use. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to try to like get it in there or just on this piece here. I don't know. But first we got to rub the epoxy on here and then put this on. But even before that, let's go ahead and sand as much as we can to get everything cleared off. Really just the gunk and grime. I should probably hit this with some sort of cleaner too. You can actually see one of the cracks right there. Well, maybe you can't, but I can. Thank you, bud. There's also the possibility that there's another small crack somewhere that I can't see or didn't see it leak out of and that that will come to light after we patch this. <sighs> Hopefully not. You grab me a couple of paper towels. You know, you know what I think? I think I might leave out the fiberglass because I'm afraid I don't know. We'll see. Let's go ahead and mix this stuff up, stick it on there, and decide after. Okay, so there's a crack right here. Mm -hmm. And then there's two cracks, one here and one here. Right up there. Yeah. So let's mix this stuff up. Mixed up. I just try to squeeze all of them into one. And then squeeze it back down into the other. Okay, now normally you're supposed to put this on something and then brush it on, but we got s so much that I'm trying to seal. I think I'm just going to do this number. Yeah, if you don't mind, just hold it like that. I want to make 
make sure I get it in this in the main. seam right here. Oh, that stuff stinks. Oh, gosh, I forgot how bad this yeah. stuff stinks. It is not a pleasant smell, y'all. You could use the brush to... I am going to use the yeah. brush. I absolutely yeah, will I use the brush. Right. I just usually... I put it on a piece of cardboard or something first, and then I brush it on. But in this case... Dumping it on there and then brushing it on. And here's the thing, you guys. This is a one-use kit. Once you open and mix this pack, you can no longer use it. So... You might as well just use as much as you possibly can because it's not it's not a bad thing. It's not going to hurt it to use a bunch. You might get some spillage and whatnot, but shouldn't be that huge of an issue otherwise. So I'm just going to coat the ever-living crap out of everything where there possibly might be a leak, even if there isn't. By the way, the package gets really warm when you mix it. It's probably like almost 100 degrees right now. And you know what? I don't think... I'm gonna mess with the fiberglass patch at all. I am gonna put a little more on here though. So can you hold it just like that for yep. just a moment? Yep. Oh crap, I'm getting it on me. Ooh, that's hot. Again, the chemical reaction makes it very hot. You're supposed to wear gloves. You're not really supposed to get this on your skin. So yeah, so don't do what I do. Ah, it's hardening in the package. It is a hot mofo. Yeah, it's already it's, starting to set up. Yep. Just fine. Oh, that is hot. Oh my gosh, that's hot. When I tell you that's hot, guys, that is fucking hot. Okay, I think that's enough. All the little spots where the cracks were, I think, are sealed. So, we're done. We're going to let it cure in the sun and then reinstall. Well, the reservoir's in. I'm leaving the cap off. Fix seems to be super solid. Nasty. What sounds like rod knock. Still persistent. Let's get on the road. can really hear the knock in here. Okay, so we made it over the mountains. I don't really remember what I had filmed and what I haven't. I've been kind of stressed out over this whole trip over all this, but getting as much footage as I can. We went over Red Mountain Pass, Olas Pass, Colbank Pass. If you guys know, Southern Colorado between Silver or between Ure, Silverton, and Durango. That definitely took a toll on uh, something and on the cooling system, whatever. Definitely flashing check engine light. I've had the code scan at O'Reilly's as a random misfire in cylinder five. Definitely hear a knock as you guys have heard. So what we're gonna do so that I can try and limp this 900 miles back home to Oklahoma City is that I'm gonna put some Rotella diesel oil in this with a mix of the Lucas oil stabilizer and uh, 
see if maybe that quieted things down or fixes things good enough to get me back to Oklahoma City. One thing though, trying to find the oil filter for this car was darn near impossible. I bought one from O'Reilly's that said it should fit, came back, got under it, tiny oil filter. Let me show you guys here. This is essentially the size that's on it. It's a little shorter, but the one that they recommend was like this big around. It's like one for like the size of like a uh, Chevy 350, like big around. And that's what O'Reilly said too. So I had them look up the V6 one because we tried cross-referencing the number from the one that's on it, but they don't make it anymore. And it, I can't find what that's the same as in other brands because it's a friend that they don't make anymore. So I got this one that I think will work. I hope the threads are the same. I hope that the uh, pickup is the same diameter. So let's get under it and drain everything and see if this will fit. If not, we're gonna have to run the old oil filter, which I really don't wanna do. Okay, I filmed a ton of oil changes here on the channel. No need to film this one. We put the T6 Rotella and the Lucas oil stabilizer in it. And now, we're going to crank it up and see if maybe we have a little quieter engine. been doing this so no surprise there when it's cold that is there we go okay exhaust manifold and squeaky belt or tensioner Still hearing that knock. Of course, that could be coming from the exhaust manifold leak and maybe I just never noticed it before. I don't know. Oh, and by the way, guys, that oil filter that I bought for the V6 definitely didn't fit this. I don't know what pickup is on this car, but it's not the one that's supposed to be according to O'Reilly's and Napa. So I put the old one back on and let's just hope that uh, it wasn't all clogged up. I don't think it was, but put it back on. And now, here, after a little bit, we're gonna hit the road back to Oklahoma, and I will catch you guys up a little bit into that trip. Hopefully we make it the 800 miles home. I think I just invented a new sport called car jousting. Who's in? Just wanted to show you guys real quick while I'm here. The project we've been working on it's this uh above ground garden with deer fence that's going in and so uh, i've been helping them out a little bit they've been doing most of the work i've just been standing around giving some direction and whatnot and helping out a tad but we just poured concrete this is all their design really like it there's going to be attached garden boxes that are two feet wide all the way around the perimeter and then the gate entryway is going to be right here and then the cattle panel or hardware cloth not sure which they're using is going to go all the way up and then they'll chop the top of those posts off fill the uh, garden boxes with dirt and have a nice little deer proof area to garden in up here in colorado Get pinched. Now 
So before I left Colorado, I stopped in Ignacio, Colorado, which is about half an hour from Durango, and stopped in at Ignacio Auto, which is owned by Jake, who is a fellow gambler and newfound friend. He listened to the sound, took a look at the engine, we talked about it for a while, and he is pretty sure that it was coming from, the knock sound was coming from the timing chain that probably timing chain guide had gone out and it was slapping the housing and it probably not a rod knock. So not much better, but we decided to send it, push on, do the 800 miles and try to get it back to Oklahoma City. After six hours on the road from Durango down to Albuquerque and then pushing down I-40 to Santa Rosa, New Mexico, we finally decided to stop uh, with the headlight situation and just everything going on with the car figured it was safer stop grab a room in santa rosa fairly inexpensive and uh, call it a night and do the other six hours the next morning Something I forgot to mention in this video, which I have mentioned in the other Mustang video, but I don't have working windows and the previous owner put pretty much blackout tent. So getting pulled over would be a very sketchy situation being that I would have to open the door and lean out and say my windows don't work and hopefully not get drawn on or shot. But uh, uh, fortunately, that ended up not happening. Made it to our hotel, called it a night, and uh, got up the next morning and headed to Oklahoma City. The next day was fairly uneventful. We drove down I-40, got some uh, decent footage and uh, decent montage put together for you guys here. At the end, we'll go through, talk about how the Mustang sits now, uh, how that overflow tank patch job did, and what the future holds for this Mustang, as well as a full recap of this trip.
Alright, come on, Cam. it's about probably a half quart low so I may have burned a little bit on that trip but really surprised at uh, how well it held up so for the future of the Mustang GT I definitely need to do a lot of top-end work the timing chain probably um, hopefully that's all that it is but that being said if I'm gonna have to take this thing back apart, the top end, I almost might as well just pull the old engine out, rebuild it, give it some power adders, and uh, make it a beast. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think in the comments. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a quick recap on this trip. We started in Oklahoma City, made our way day one to Woodward, Oklahoma, spent the night there. Next day, drove all the way to Pueblo, Colorado, six hours, went to a salvage yard, got the lights I needed to drive through the night, drove another six plus hours over the Rocky Mountains, along I-70 to Grand Junction, got to Grand Junction, got up the next morning, two hours later, went gambling. That afternoon, after about 90 miles into the gambler, the intake blew. We then had some fun for a couple of days, for the rest of the gambler and then had it triple a towed up to my buddy's parents house worked on it swapped the intake there fixed the overflow tank at least sealed the overflow tank and then got on the road to durango spent a couple of days there headed all the way back down to i-40 in albuquerque and scooted our way all the way to oklahoma city and it was an epic and fun trip I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, all that good stuff. I will see you in the next one. Billy D, epic road tripping on out of here. Peace.